Thank you so much for taking the time to submit yourself to the Word of God. And you know, you have a teachable heart, and that is so pleasing to the Lord. Please take the time to like this video. And if you would, please share it with somebody that you think it may be a blessing to. Uh, this is how we uh, spread the Word of God. This is how we scatter our seeds, and in due time, uh, we will bear the fruit of the seeds, the good deeds that we've done. And that's really what Shabbat is all about. Shabbat is a month of shifting and it's an inner shift. Uh, it's a month of trees. So it's also a month where we look at the Hebrew letter Sadi and we see that it is a man lying down or kneeling before the Lord, but he is totally connected to the Yud which is the divine spark, which in essentially is the spirituality of God. And so the message for this month, what the Holy Spirit is speaking about in our lives is that he's reminding us that we must lay down our life for the Lord to allow him to feed us, to nourish us, to stay in union with Jesus. And if we do that, there's going to be an internal shift that will take place in you. You will worry a lot less. You will not overwork yourself. You know, the scripture in Ecclesiastes actually says that don't overwork uh, your righteousness. In other words, don't feel like you have to work, work, work uh, to be righteous. So we have to stay in the zone with the Lord. Connection is a very powerful word right now. Connection brings conception. So if you want the fruit of righteousness in your life, you must stay in connection to Christ. Uh, you must stay in union with Christ. But again, the enemy will always come to bring disconnection. Disconnection is before misconception. And so we can really get confused and where there's confusion there's every evil work so the enemy really wants to get us off this month but if we will stay connected to the Lord believe that in this moment of time there's an inward shift that is taking place we are cutting off old uh, thinking patterns that we base our identity in, which are contrary to what the Lord says about you. And saints, the word of God says that we are righteous ones. We are the Zadiks of this world. And we carry the water of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, and we carry much fruit in our lives so others can taste of that fruit and be blessed. We are wisdom to many people. And the reason for that is the Holy Spirit is within us. Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, brings wisdom into our life so that we can be blessed by that wisdom, but that we can also impart wisdom to others. That is our mission as we... Uh, continue our journey in this world. Don't feel like that you have to be some kind of spiritual guru to meet the mark with the Lord. No, you have the spirit of the living God within you. He has anointed you. Most of us live very ordinary lives, but in the ordinariness of life, there's great power because the anointing flows in that. Think about Jesus. He went around doing good and healing all of those who were oppressed by the enemy. And, and Christ just moved among ordinary people, and he did um, 
in the natural, ordinary things. He went to weddings. He went to certain parties. He went to uh, dinner engagements. He loved to be with ordinary people. And m his miraculous power, because he humbled himself, was so great. Signs and wonders followed his ministry. And so even in your workplace, you have a forum to be a Zadik, a righteous one. As you humble yourself to be the servant of all, Christ said that, to be the greatest is to be the servant of all. That means there's humility working in your life. The Lord can use you for miracles, for great signs and wonders. And that is good news for all of us. Looking at John 15, 5, let's begin with that. Again, we're in the great month of Shabbat. It is the month of trees. It is the tree of righteousness that the Lord calls us. He says that we are his planting to bring glory to him. Trees are very similar to humans in many ways, believe it or not. If you look at the nervous system of a human being, it looks very much like the trees that we see right now in Shabbat without the leaves. Of course, now we're going to go into spring and there's going to be Great foliage is going to come, fruit's going to come. But right now, the sap is rising in the trees. There's a shift going on inwardly, and the, the tree branches are very bare. But in that, we can see our nervous system by which we communicate with the outside world and which we communicate with the inside world. So it's kind of amazing how the Lord moves that way, first the natural and then the spiritual. Again, John 15, 5, I am the sprouting vine. You are the branches. We are the branches connected to the Lord. As you live in union, very important. We have to live. This is our lifestyle, and we're living in union with Christ. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. So it's not like you have to work like a Trojan for this fruit to come out of you. No, because you are now dependent upon the Lord, upon the Holy Spirit. Uh, fruit is going to come from you. It's actually going to not have to push itself out of you. It's going to stream out of you. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. You don't have to work at it. It comes by your relationship and your union with Jesus. And so we have to live this way. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. Again, if you do not live in union. Now, of course, many times we sin. And at that moment of sin, there is a separation. But we're never separated from the Lord's love for us. So at the moment of getting off a track when when there's a disconnection we should have the wherewithal or the consciousness to immediately go father forgive me cleanse me i don't want to be disconnected to you i want to stay connected to you so there may be times in your life where you're separated but they should only be very short periods of time now if you live separated from the lord in other words your focus is on the pleasures of this world you're living for the pleasures of this world or, or the possessions of this world or if you're living for the positions if you're living for that then there's a separation and you're you're going to find you won't have a lot of peace and unfortunately you will not bear fruit, righteous fruit, the fruit of righteousness in your life, which is a sorrow for you and for others because you're missing uh, your destiny in the Lord. And so we have to come to this place where we stay in union with Jesus. We inwardly talk with him, converse with him. We think about him. We settle ourselves on the word of God. You can take one scripture and meditate on that. It's not like you have to read the whole Bible. Now, that if you want to do that, that's okay. But there's great power in reading the word and then just meditating over and over and over. That's a way that you connect with the Lord. And, and when you're connected with Jesus, you're going to connect with his body. You're going to want to be with people who love Jesus. And 
who are also teachable and who can be vessels who are going to help you and you're going to be able to help them. That is so beautiful. That is allowing your fruit that you're bearing because of uh, your union with Christ. That fruit is very sweet for others to taste. And then, praise God, because you're connected to others in the body, you can eat of their fruit. You can be encouraged by them. You can be blessed by them in many different ways. That is the beauty of the body of Christ. Now, John 15, 16 follows through. And Jesus says, you didn't choose me. So we have to begin to base our identity uh, not on we work, 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 so the Lord will choose us. No, he's already chosen you. And so you have to stay there. You didn't choose me, but I've chosen and commissioned you to go into the world to bear fruit. So don't get so caught up with all these questions about, I don't know my destiny. What what does the Lord want to do with my life? Oh, I just want to know the will of God. Listen, identify with the truth that you are loved by the Lord. There's nothing that can separate you from his love. Therefore, you want to stay and live in union with Jesus. And when you make him your source, you are going to bear fruit. Remember that he chose you. So because he's chosen you, you have to have the sense that you are worthy. And you are worthy because only his precious blood could pay the price for you. You didn't choose me, Jesus says, but I've chosen you. And then he says, he follows that up by says, and I've commissioned you. So we've been commissioned by Jesus. And this is our destiny to go into the world and to bear fruit. So even from your mother's womb, the Lord knew you. So in the spirit realm, the Lord's already commissioned you and he sent you into the world, just like he's just like the father God sent his son into the world because he loved the world. Now, he died for the world. We come into the world to lay our life down for the Lord and for those we love. And in that, we, in a very powerful way, become like Jesus because we're commissioned to go into the world to bear fruit. And our fruit would be the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, peace, joy, faithfulness, kindness, gentleness, patience, self-control. All of those things are so sweet to the taste. And when you're operating in all those things in the world, you become a source for other people. You're, you have that grace coming from the Spirit of the Lord. That is the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. Apart from the Lord, uh, you're powerless. But in the Lord, you bear wonderful, sweet fruit. And that is very important to people who don't know Jesus. Because if they can taste of you, they can get a taste of how good the Lord is. Taste and see, the scripture says, that I am good and the Lord is good. And good is the same thing as righteous. And so when you are uh, planted by the Lord and you know that it's Jesus Christ that is your righteousness and that he plants you as a tree, uh, of righteousness so that you can glorify the Lord. You're going to have that beautiful fruit of righteousness being born out in your life for people to taste. People who are in the body need it, but also people that are in the world. You may be surprised just what a smile might do to somebody who's in the world, who's having a bad day, or, or maybe just an eye contact with somebody. And as you lock eyes with them, the love of the Lord is streaming out from you, from a heart of love, to bring a healing to a person. These things may in some ways be imperceptible as far as your, your natural body, but there is a shift and there is great power moving as you move this way in the spirit realm. When you have this heart to stay in union with Jesus, to understand he's chosen you and commissioned you. You're focusing on that every day. You're going to bear fruit and your fruit will last uh, because it will make a lasting impact 
on people, will even last into eternity. And if that contact, that eye contact, that word of wisdom, that that seed that came out of you, just a brief word or two, if that planted within a person righteousness coming from the Holy Spirit, you may never ever see that person again, but later on that person may truly get converted and totally surrender to the Lord. And do you know what? That is part of your fruit account. So there, there are many, many things. You know, the scripture says in John that Jesus did so many things. And he said, but I can't write them all down because there's not even enough of books for me to record them. And so, so many times we do some, so many things and there's no recording of that. We don't even remember what we've done or said or done. And, but you don't know the impact that it may have on a person later on in life. That is how it moves in the spirit, beloved. So take heart. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a Billy Graham. You, you can just be a person who is moving in the righteousness of God in your workplace. You've got a word in due season for people because you're connected to the source, Jesus Christ. And there will be beautiful fruit that will come out of your life. But the main thing is you have to stay in union. And so you're always conscious, I'm going to stay in connection so I can have conception so I can bear fruit, righteous fruit for the kingdom of God. That's who I am. And that's what I base my identity on. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I'm taking possession of that in him. We live, we move, and we have our being. So this is what we appropriate. And this is how we like. We live this way. We have our very being. We, are, we be because we're in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5, 8. Once your life was full of sin's darkness, and we all have to admit that that's all of our testimony. No matter if you grew up in a church or, or whatever, we were all born into iniquity. That is how we come into the world. But now you have the very light of our Lord shining through you. So we all have that in common. Um, we all have had darkness in our life. But once we had the veil lifted from our eyes to see Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, miracle happened. And we became a new creation. And now we're living as a new creation because we're in Christ. But now you have the very light of our Lord shining through you. So you are joined with Jesus. You are in union with Jesus. So his light, and there is no darkness in Christ. Now there's still darkness in us. We have to admit that. But as we join ourselves in union with the Lord, his beautiful light shines into us and illuminates that dark spot so that we can see it, that we can repent of it. The Lord wants to make you a person, conform you to his likeness, so that in every area of your life, you have the light of Christ shining through. And that's only because you are in union with him. Your mission, here we go, your mission, your assignment, your destiny, is to live as children, flood it with his revelation light. Revelation light is the wisdom of the Lord. It is hidden things that have been uncovered to you. So you're seeking first the kingdom of our Heavenly Father and his righteousness. Righteousness it means that you are seeking after the way he does things. You're, you're seeking his attitude on a situation. And the Lord can reveal so much to you. Don't lean beloved, and we are so easily caught up in leaning to how we understand things. And that's really a detriment to us. We have to renew our minds that in every situation we acknowledge our father and we trust him and we don't lean to our own understanding. So when we do that, he, he's able 
to direct our paths. He shines the light on us so we know what we need to do. We know what we need to say. And we understand what is really going on in our situation. And the supernatural fruits of his light will be seen in you, which is goodness, righteousness, and truth. The Lord wants you to be a water carrier, um, a water bearer, carrying the rivers of living water within you, which refresh people. This is a picture of the Holy Spirit. You, when you show up and, and you're, you're so powerfully anointed, people will benefit when they are in union with you, when they uh, are able to eat your fruit. You know, apple trees don't eat their own fruit, right? <laughs> They're there uh, for others to pick that apple and eat it. Now, in our life, we can enjoy the fruit of our labor, yes. And also we can eat of the fruit of other people, which is so sweet to the taste. And so the Lord is saying, look who you are. Look at the zadik that you are. You've laid your life down for the Lord. You're fully dependent upon Jesus. You are flooded with revelation light. You will be so highly blessed, but you will be a blessing to others. And what will happen is you will have a strong, you will have a meaningful, purposeful life as you live your journey in this world. Proverbs 3, 17 and 18. The ways of wisdom are sweet, like fruit is sweet, always drawing you into a place of wholeness. Now we know that Jesus is wisdom. And so in union with Jesus, we're going to receive his wisdom. And it's always so sweet. The communion with the Lord Jesus is a sweet communion. And he's bringing you into a place of wholeness. He wants to heal you, heal your damaged emotions, heal the trauma that you've experienced in your life. He wants to make you a person of peace, of wholeness. You're, you're lacking nothing. And that is through your union with him, seeking for her, seeking wisdom, seeking the Lord will bring you to the discovery of untold blessings. Oh, how wonderful. For she is the healing tree of life to those who taste her fruits. She is the healing tree of life to those who taste her fruits. How powerful we are to be a healing tree, a tree of wisdom. The tree of life, of course, is Jesus the Christ. We are to eat from his tree. We are to stay in communion with him. And by that, we too eat of his fruit. And then we become a healing tree. And we bear this fruit. It just streams out of us. And everyone who comes and tastes that fruit in our life, they are blessed. But you are blessed. Because number one, you can see how the Lord has used you as a vessel to help somebody, to bring somebody into the fullness of knowing the Lord, but, but also just receiving a good word from the Lord. We should all be vessels of the water of the Spirit that bring great healing to people. Proverbs 9.9, 9, instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. This is a hallmark of a righteous person. You have a teachable spirit. You, you don't really believe that you know all things, right? You are coming to know the Lord by, by your union with him, by your experience. But you're always willing to be taught. And that's why you become wiser. Because you submit yourself under the word of God, which is truth. The word is Jesus. So it's so important that we be taught the word and that it becomes our source for reality as we live our life in this world because there's so much fantasy in this world and misconception and confusion, envy and strife in this world, which perpetuates every evil work. Proverbs 11 too, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. But when with humility comes wisdom. So here again, 
we understand pride is going to bring us into a place of disgrace. People who have moved in great pride, political leaders who have moved in great pride, arrogance, they are to really be servants of the people. Um, they are to come under uh, what the people uh, have put them in office for. So when people move in an arrogant way, just bide your time because they will come into disgrace. And we can see that today in our world today. But with humility, what comes wisdom? Stay humble before the Lord because a wise person is truly a humble person. Proverbs 1130, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. You don't have to wait to heaven to be rewarded, beloved. As you are bearing this fruit of righteousness, you are a tree of life and you will be rewarded upon the earth, certainly in heaven too, but also in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Unfortunately, people who move in wickedness and in sin, they will too bear the brunt of what they sow here upon the earth. Underscoring this, James 3, 13, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. A wise person is a humble person. Philippians 1, 9 through 11, and this I pray, this is the prayer of the Apostle Paul, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. Knowledge is union. Knowledge is connection to Jesus because you're experiencing Jesus's presence and his words. And in all discernment, you need discernment. You need to know how to weigh things so that you will make the right decision, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you're only going to approve things that are excellent. You're not going to approve things that are not excellent. Why? Because you have the wisdom of the Lord operating through you. This helps a lot of people, people who are not walking in the wisdom of the Lord. You can be such a great help to others. Being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. And who gets all the glory? The Lord gets the glory, but praise God. He allows us to share in that glory. You are a Zadik, beloved. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are a tree of life. You are a tree of wisdom. You are a tree of healing. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace, give you wholeness in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.